so welcome to another great interview that we're going to have here with Houston ATD. I have Monica Cornetti and then Sharon Goza here on the call. They're going to both be presenting together, so I have them both on this interview. And so Monica is the CEO and founder of Sententia Gamification, and Sharon is a she's a game de gamification developer at NASA. And so I was looking over just a little bit of, of the bios, and I kind of have an idea of what gamification is, but could you maybe tell me a little bit more about what gamification is as far as it applies to learning and what you guys do? Do you want me to take this one, Sharon? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, gamification, if you look at just what the base definition is, it's motivational design. It's roughly 75% psychology, 25% the method you deploy it. So deployment of gamification can be pure analog, which looks something like a board game or a card game or sticky notes on a wall even. But it's, or it could be fully immersive uh, zombie apocalypse sales game like our friends Carl Kopp created. So as you look at what gamification is, it's motivational design. It's the use of game elements game mechanics in a non-game context. So game elements are anything that you use to play a game. Mm -hmm. Game mechanics are what is created when we put rules to those games. So dice in a game now becomes a mechanic of chance. Uh, the, if two or three players, there's, there's mechanics of taking turns, player versus players, there could be guilds. So all of that creates a dynamic of fun. And depending on what rules apply, it makes the game either cooperative, collaborative, or more competitive. Mm. We take all of that and move it into a non-game context. So at Sententia, we specifically focus on the gamification of learning for adults. So that could be in a university setting as a student, or it could also be inside of corporate training, HR compliance, uh, productivity, engagement. So uh, it's behavioral example, design. And Go ahead. Just give me a quick example of how you would apply that in like a corporate office. Uh, well, we have any kind of, of training program, like if you're doing onboarding, and let's say you have a, a, a what right now you use 800 PowerPoint slides and a four-inch notebook to onboard your, your team. We turn that into more of an adventure, uh, throw them right into the action, perhaps something to do with the history of the organization, and take these new employees uh, on, on an adventure as they, as they learn about the history of the company, what the company does, what their role is. It helps uh, to get them uh, embedded into the culture more uh, quickly for them to understand and really become a part. And what Sharon's going to be talking about on Monday at our session is the use of narrative in gamification because narrative is also a mechanic that is a key component in great gamification design because our brains think the way that stories are told. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. We love a great story. Don't we all love a great story? One that has some twists and turns, unexpected surprises. Uh, it can be something that's, you know, heartbreaking or it could be something that's, oh my gosh, I can't believe that just happened. But whatever it is, it helps that whatever the content is, whatever we want people to learn so they can do, it helps it to stick. It helps it to, uh, for recall and uh, being able to actually apply it. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree more. And that this subject's obviously close to my heart because that's what I've been doing for years now is really digital storytelling, but also just that concept, you know, helping people with their own personal brand. So if they could give an elevator pitch, being able to tell maybe a brief story and connect people with like the individual um, that they're helping or just a story of like even a success story of a client, right? It's all about like storytelling. Right. It just like goes in a lot of different directions. Well, cool. Well, thank you for um, sharing a little bit about gamification. That's actually just a quick tidbit. I know one of the better trainings that I had received was through uh, when I worked for Toyota. And they did, I mean, it sounds like this is what you're talking about. They told us about the history of Toyota. And then as we went through the training, they had this game where you would guess and they'd like, I think you'd like push some button 
I forgot on your phone, they had like an app and then like you could see the score leaders, you know, on the big screen. So it was like retention, like what year did Toyota, you know, start the Corolla and then you'd answer the question. So like the whole way through it was a game. And then if you, you won, you won prizes. Oh, fun. Similar. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. 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 It's a, uh, that's a form of it. It's a, it's a great um, application of it. Um, we, we call that, uh, I call it soft core gamification uh, because it's not really getting embedded, but it's very playful and game-like. And it made you, you kept going back to it, right? And, that, and that's, the, that's really the key. We want to keep getting the employee to come back, to want to engage with it, to see how they're doing. Uh, for the competitive person in the group, they're going to do what it takes to see their name at the top, somebody who's high power, high status. For the more collaborative people, they'd probably help people uh, others in the group to to get their scores up too. It's not about beating somebody else. It's about us all getting there together. So yeah, it's a great example of a, a nice application of it. Excellent. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about what the topic. It's increasing engagement through storytelling. And Monica, I know you you know shared a little bit about what that's going to look like. But um, Sharon, could you talk a little more about? you know, what you're going to be presenting on, how that's applied to what you do right now at NASA? Sure. So, um, so my presentation is, is basically a story on how to tell stories in, uh, in training. So at NASA, what I've done is woven stories throughout the training so that the, for retention purposes. Uh, one example is an anti-harassment training where you are trying to put a product together and you have to solve the problems, the harassment problems of the people on the team, otherwise the product doesn't get done. So you start with an overall story, overarching story, and then you weave in the training modules throughout that story and how those modules are answered and affect on how the story is, the outcome of the story. So um, my, my presentation will be teaching you storytelling and narrative through a story and then going back over the points and showing you how you can put that in, in different ways in different training. So I, I'm kind of curious about this. Um, I would imagine that the majority of people working at NASA were, might be a little bit more on the scientific, uh, logic-minded people. So do you ever find that when you're doing more narrative and storytelling that they're wanting just like the facts? and not the story, or does it work the same way with? So I found, I, since I'm doing things like anti-harassment training, and the, the one I'm working on right now is ethics training, and usually their typical PowerPoint, read this, answer a quiz at the end, most of the people find that it's a nice break, and they definitely are more engaged in it. You, you do have your set of analytical people that are like, just give me the facts, I just want to take the quiz and get out of it. But, but for the most part, everybody has, has favorably re responded to it, and we've had great results from people taking it, like thousands of people taking it as opposed to hundreds of people taking it so that they can read the story. And since the, um, the anti-harassment one, you get the outcome varies on how you answer. I've had people take it multiple times just to see what the different outcomes are at the end. Because they like taking it so much. Because because they want to see what happens. Yeah, what happens if I answer it this way? Yeah. yeah. You know, if I do this, what happens? If I do this, what happens? And and the surprise and the delight at the end, like you're making a 3D food printer in the story, and at the end of the story, uh, it might go through the flames. Okay. <laughs> if you do bad, it it blows up. If you if you do well, it prints a hamburger. So they can go back and run it multiple times to see the different things that happen. Plus, and along the way, when you answer the scenario right or wrong, you see the consequences. So, you know, somebody may quit. Somebody may get into a fight with somebody else. And, you know, that, that means that the product doesn't get done or their part of the product doesn't get done. So. Which, yeah. Scott, when we go back to, uh, I just want to interject sure. here. That's it. To me, that's a, 
a, an example of a fantastic training. People complaining because I don't have time to do this. I do this every year. I've been here, I've been working here thirty years. I think it's right. I don't have time to do it once, but I'll go back two, three, four times. And again, they're not winning anything at the right, end. They're right. just watching the outcome of it and just the delight of the narrative of ah, I can't believe that happened. That's great. And so, what happens if I do this? That's a fantastic example of really effective training because people are willing to make the investment of their most valuable asset, their time, to get back in there and try things again and just to see what happens with it because they're curious about it. Yeah, and thanks for saying that, Monica, because it clicked when Sharon was, was um, sharing that. The difference between what the gamification is versus even what I shared about Toyota, I know there's this dating app that just started doing something like that and I guess it got really popular where people would go on the dating app and like they'd have different um, options during like they're on, it's like a, you know, it's like a 3D or like a cartoon kind of thing where they're like meeting up with friends and you have to make decisions. And then the cool thing is, is based on those answers, they pair you up with like a, you know, a partner. They're like, oh, well, you know, Monica also chose to save the dog. You know, you guys both have the altruistic um, side of you. Right, right. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So is it that opposites attract or that we would like each other more? Uh, in this case, <laughs> right, exactly. That's a good point. In this case, right? the similar, you know, yeah, you yeah. Guys are altruistic. That's fun. That's really fun. That's good. Uh, but yeah, that's that's really, really cool. I like, I like what you're saying because it is very... Um, um, engaging to be able to see like how your actions like affect things and like you know what could change if you do it differently so that's very cool um, and that kind of answers my question when i was looking at the presentation because i was looking at some of the bullet points i'm like okay this is what i usually do in my branding presentations you know I share an example then i weave the narrative with like curriculum type material so it's you know it sticks more but then i think this is what you touched on sharon but clarify not i was curious about the audience becoming part of the narrative that part and is that kind of what you're what you're saying is happening when you're doing these trainings the uh, the ones that i've designed yes but the the talk that i'm going to give is going to basically show you how you can weave narrative into any type of training so if you have a backstory even if even if the person isn't changing the story as they go if you have an overall backstory that is continuous throughout your training, when somebody has to recall a piece of information, they can think back to, oh, well, what did this character do there? Mm. Oh, this character did that and, you know, they got into trouble or they were wrong. So it, it's, I mean, people have been telling stories for education since caveman days, right? right. So um, we learn to survive through stories. So our brains are kind of wired to click with uh, remembering a story or something that happened to somebody else in a story that says, oh, well, you know, they did this. I don't want to do that. That's, that didn't work out. Or, hey, this person did this and it worked. So, you know, maybe I should try that. So if you're weaving a story into other ways, like I told you a, a way to do it through our anti-harassment, but there's other ways to do it in things like escape rooms. You can do an escape room training and and your overall story is why are you in the escape room and why do you want to get out mm -hmm. and then the training is is woven into that so just oh narrative can apply to any type of training and you can even have narrative through a, a powerpointed bullet chart which will help it yeah. won't be it won't have the impact uh, that a fully immersive one will have but um but it will it definitely help yeah, I mean, that's, that's so true because I, I, I imagine maybe listeners may be in a spot where they're doing more PowerPoint presentations right now. They're not doing escape rooms, but, um, you know, to echo what you're saying, when I would do PowerPoints, I would usually give a story of how the material related to my own history. Maybe it was like, you know, my own professional history if I'm talking about career development. And then I would use stories of other people you know, and how they've applied like certain principles and where they've gotten. Um, so it's good to know that you could still apply that narrative 
and the weaving in, even if you're doing like a basic PowerPoint. Is that kind of, you know, going on what you say? Pretty much. I mean, you're doing, you're doing snippets of stories. And what I'm talking about is, is the basic story structure where you have a beginning, you have an end, you have a middle, you have conflict, you have resolution, you have things that don't go right. So you, you can have that story throughout your entire PowerPoint presentation and the different points can be brought up at those different parts of the story. Yeah. So, so you, and you both are effective. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. yeah. If you think about like what, what Sharon's example is more of, if, you, if we go back to games and if we deconstruct games, like any game really has a narrative, right? Uh, like Monopoly. There, we're not starting with the whole telling a story, but Monopoly has a narrative. It's about, uh, you know, being the tycoon, acquiring real estate tycoon, acquiring real estate and gaining wealth and bankrupting other people. And so we understand, and that's, how Sharon designed, she creates this overarching narrative that everything sits inside of. And also in training, I've seen effective storytelling, like if that, that um, I think it's one that a lot of people have used, like in time management, you know, filling a, a mason jar with walnuts, rice, and beans to manage your time. And if you don't do the walnuts first, all you have is rice and beans. And people may not remember anything else from that whole time management training, but they'll remember all I have is rice and beans because I don't have anything important in that jar, right? So again, but our brain, it just grabs onto that because it makes sense. to. It's a story that was told. And like Sharon said, since the days of cavemen, we understood that saber-toothed tiger would kill us. This is why, you know, this is where we go. This, and that's how... Uh, that's how it was passed from generation to generation was through those stories. Yeah, absolutely. I just picture, you know, people at the campfire, right? Sharing stories about their, you know, grandparents or when they were a kid and what they did and just even that too, right? It's just yeah. some, something about yeah. it is entertaining and engaging. Um, so what, Sharon so what, and I have done this session uh, for a, another event and it was so engaging in and of itself. I mean, the chat bar was just exploding with questions, but how do you do this? And how would you do that? And what would you do in this situation? And Sharon is masterful at answering those questions too and bringing, bringing it back down to something that people can start to apply immediately. Right. Uh, even if they don't have, uh, like if they have a training that's already existing in, and they want to and that it's now moving and it's virtual. Well, how can I take that uh, to engage my audience even more? Yeah. And it's a simple step. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, let me correct that. It's, it's, uh, it's simple, but it's not easy, right? I'm going to say it, it take, you have to craft the narrative, which takes a lot, you know, and writing's not about writing, it's about rewriting. So it's, the concept is simple. Crafting the narrative can take a little bit of work, but everybody can do it. Right. It's, Everybody can do it. Yeah. 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 I, and that's kind of where I was trying to, where I was trying to go earlier was to see like how maybe people that are going to be listening on Monday could apply that to the presentations they're already doing or could kind of, you know, like I'm thinking for myself, it's like, well, doing a game, you know, escape room for like, you know, presentation I'm doing seems like too much, but like if I could add it to something that I already do, that seems like it's plausible for me right now. Right. Yeah. So thanks for, for expanding on that. And then, so, so I'm curious, are you guys going to be doing sort of the gamification process for the training on Monday where there's a beginning, middle and end? Sharon is going to tell a story on Monday. Okay. So you'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll leave you with a little bit of cliffhanger here. Yeah. Yeah. Can't tell you everything, right? Um, <laughs> I don't want to give all my secrets away. So. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to know the, the, whole, the headline that that's going to be happening on Monday. Yeah. I did. Sharon will use the technique that she's teaching. She'll use that on uh, Monday. So people will get to experience it firsthand. I'm super that excited. That's, yeah. that's exactly what I wanted to know. That's all I needed to know for now because, and what better way to model the effectiveness of something than to actually show it in real time? You know, it's like, don't just tell me, show me. Right, right. So yeah. that's, exactly. That's awesome. Well, I mean, and I guess I'm just thinking like, 
I don't know, just maybe this is where my brain's going, but I'm thinking that if you could get people at NASA that engaged in wanting to do it again, like people that I would imagine are extremely brilliant and with that brilliance comes that type of like maybe they're, they might see something like that training as unimportant, right? And they're so focused on all these other things that are extremely important. So to hear that this is so powerful that it could have people at NASA wanting to retake something that really has no impact on their work, right? They're just retaking it because they like it so much. Is that what I, that's my understanding, right? That's, that's, that's amazing. Because they wanted to see the a different end of the story. Yeah, that's incredible. I could only imagine what it would do at maybe like, you know, just, I don't know, other corporate offices where maybe they're not going into space, right? And they're not just so focused on something that like maybe has that significance how much they're going to want to retake this training. Have you tried, yeah. have, have you taken this concept to other companies, Sharon? So the, the anti-harassment one was NASA specific. Okay. I'm, I'm working on one now that's for the USDA and NASA. So still in the government sector. And okay. the hope is, is once that one's finished, they'll be putting it on their website and publishing it for anybody to go ahead and, and take if they want. So, how exciting, Sharon! Yeah. Out, we will, yeah. we will find out in, yeah. in March. <laughs> that yeah. is really exciting. Um, I'm excited to hear more about how that goes. I, I can't imagine it not being very successful. So, and it is definitely a story. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything else that you wanted to share today? I've learned so much already, so I'm excited to learn more on Monday. Well, I think I'm good. I think anyone who uh, is, is curious about how to do it, just think of some programs right now that you're, uh, you're struggling with either engagement, like getting people, like if it's a compliance course, getting people to actually take it, mm -hmm. or if it's a new course that you're thinking about developing or something that you're like, how am I going to move this online? How will this work? Just yeah. think, of some, think of some programs that either you're struggling with right now or you'd like to see how it could look different. Come with those in mind on Monday so that when Sharon, uh, as she, you can start seeing, oh, I could see how this, this idea could work here. I could, I could take something, you know, it might not look like this, but I could make it look like this. And I think having some ideas when you come on Monday will help to really lock in the session for you. Oh my, yes. Thank you so much for saying that, uh, Monica, because that's, I feel like that's, that could help so many people that are part of ATD, right? Right. The, the training they have or thinking about where they're struggling and, to your point, even the example that I was bringing up, that's, that's something that's completely virtual, right? And so a dating app that made their process a gamification process. Yeah, right. it's, it's incredible. So, um, And then if they want to continue further um, in February, I believe, the GameCon, online GameCon. Right. There's Thank a, you for that, Sharon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll be doing a session on, on narrative and kind of a game and playing to put together a narrative. So Yeah. So what Sharon's referring to is GameCon, which is the International Conference for the Gamification of Learning. And because we're being forced to go virtual, we unpacked everything. We're not just taking what we were going to do and moving it online. We're totally revamping it from the ground up. And what we're actually doing is going 48 hours straight uh, starting with Greenwich Mountain Time on Monday, the 22nd of February. And it's going to be time zone specific. So we'll have people from across the globe giving sessions for two, you know, two 24 hour blocks. Of course, everything will be recorded. So if it's not in your time right. zone, you can access it when it's good for you. But our idea was we always do everything in the United States Eastern time zone, right? That's how we structure life. Like, and that's good. And if we're going virtual, why don't we make it good for uh, practitioners across the globe who can participate then? So we are super excited. I don't know how we're going to live through 48 hours of nonstop, uh, <laughs> but it'll be, it's an interesting challenge that we've created that we are determined uh, to, and it'll be fully gamified also. Uh, we'll be using uh, one of our platforms, Blue Rabbit, and we'll, it'll be a fully gamified event from start to finish. So you get to experience it in real time. That so is thanks for bringing that up, Sharon. Super exciting. Yeah, okay. I love it. Um, so as we're wrapping up, 
where could people follow you guys? Like, you know, like social media wise, or just learn more about what you guys are doing in February. Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Sharon's on LinkedIn. Uh, GameCon has a presence on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, so uh, I'm just Monica Cornetti or GameCon, G-A-M-I-C-O-N. Sharon Goza has, is out at LinkedIn and active. So real quick, is your Twitter uh, GameCon? Is that your Twitter handle? Uh, my Twitter handle is at Monica Cornetti. Okay, so it's just your name. I got you. Yeah. And Sharon, what about yourself? Just LinkedIn. LinkedIn? Okay. Yeah. I work for the government, so I don't... <laughs> you don't go too far out? We're, we're, we're too far out. Just yeah. a little bit just yet. Just for a while. Yeah. 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 So Sharon Goza, you're, are you in Houston? Is that how they would find you? I am. In, I'm in Houston. I'm at JSC. So. Great. Yeah. And then I'm a, I'm a LinkedIn guy, so if you're having a hard time finding Sharon, you could always type in NASA in the search terms and that should help narrow things down. I imagine there's no other sharing goes as at NASA. Mm, no. no, that should be the only one. There, <laughs> there, no. there are other sharing goes as, but not at NASA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, ladies. It was such a pleasure to have you. I can't wait. I've already uh, registered for your guys um, presentation Monday. And so for those people listening, it's going to be Monday, December 7th at 12 noon central time. So we really hope, I know there's already a lot of people registered, so I'm, I'm really excited to be one of those people that are attending. Uh, can't wait to learn more and learn more about February. That sounds like a great thing um, that I'm actually now excited to, to you know, possibly attend myself. Uh, so thank you, ladies, for educating me today, and I'm sure a lot more people will be listening to this. Great. Thanks so Welcome. much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you Monday then. Absolutely. All right.